Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, on October 11th, our country marked National Coming Out Day, an annual day to support and celebrate LGBTQ individuals, those who are out, and those who have yet to come out. When activists established the first National Coming Out Day in 1988, they sought to make the personal political. Every LGBTQ person can be an activist, they argued, by coming out to their family, friends, and community and living their life openly. They sought to banish the bigotry that festers in ignorance, the environment of silence, shame, and self-hatred in which many were raised and which still blights the lives of so many. And every year at Bethel, we proudly and joyously celebrate National Coming Out Day with a coming out Shabbat. We usually invite a member of the community to share their coming out story. This year, we were in the midst of celebrating Sukkot and did not get to mark this day properly. But I believe that it's especially appropriate to celebrate National Coming Out Day today on Parshat Breshit, because this Parsha especially celebrates the diversity of creation. As each of the seven days of Breshit unfolds, creation becomes richly varied and complex, and God delights in this proliferation, this beautiful flowering of diverse forms of life. As the Torah tells us with each passing day, Vayar Elohim Kitov, God saw that it was good. The message is clear. Homogeneity isn't good. As some of, might say, as some of us might say, it's boring. The Torah tells us that it is variety in all forms of life that God cherishes and celebrates. God reaches, a creation reaches its peak with the emergence of the dazzlingly complex, nuanced creature known as Adam, the human being. At this point, looking out at all of creation, God says for the first and only time, Hine tov me'od, behold, this is very good. The diversity of life testifies to God's greatness as creator. And then, at the end of the sixth day, when God has finished laboring, the Torah says, Vayichulu hashamayim v'ha'aretz v'chol tzva'am. The heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. These are the words we recite during Friday night Kiddush. After our own long week of laboring, possibly a baby, possibly just our work and our school all week long, like God, we step back from our work, we look around, and we reflect on our blessings. Commentators speculate on the meaning of the word siva'am, usually translated as the array or the host of heaven and earth. For the 13th century sage Ramban, the tzava of the earth refers to all life on earth, beasts, creeping things, fish, plants, and human beings. The tzava of heaven refers to planets, stars, the sun, and the moon. In modern Hebrew, tzava is an army, as host can also mean an army of multitudes. Ramban teaches that a tzava is a group that is organized and regimented, a disciplined body standing ready to do the will of its leader. Thus, the tzava, the full array of creation, testifies to God's sovereignty and was brought into existence to fulfill the divine will. In this model, human beings as well are here to serve God and bring to fruition God's vision for the world. We are, as it were, God's army here on earth. Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi, a third century sage in the land of Israel, offers a different reading. In a play on words, he teaches, don't read the word as tzva'am, their host, rather read it as tzivyonam, a word that means their full form. Rabbi Yeshua says that all creatures were brought into being with their full stature, their full capacities, and their full beauty. Kol tzivyonam, he writes. Trees were created already filled with ripe fruit. Thus, each element of creation carries its own extraordinary potential. And people, too, are born full of gifts, overflowing with potential. This is a powerful statement about identity. Human beings obviously do not come into the world fully formed. They spend years growing, changing, and evolving. But Rabbi Yoshua suggests that in some sense, 
We come into the world already possessing our own unique tzivyon, our form and character, which defines who we are and who we can become. Our inherent talents, capacities, and personal traits, our gender and orientation, they're all there at the beginning, bereshit, in all their beauty and glory. Of course, much will depend on the way we are raised, on the kind of family and community we encounter. Will our talents be discovered, encouraged, and nourished? Will our emerging personality traits be embraced by those around us? Will we be seen, loved, and celebrated for who we are? Will our circumstances enrich or impoverish our opportunities? Each of us is born with our own particular tzivyon, but many factors will determine whether our gifts will bear fruit, whether we'll achieve our full potential. Shabbat Breshit is a day to notice and appreciate the array of heaven and earth, the beautifully varied creation around us, including human beings in all their dazzling diversity. It's a day to honor the tzivyon, the unique identity, form, and character of every person, a day when we might rededicate ourselves to expressing our own gifts and helping others to express their full potential. And it's a day to think in a new way about what it could mean to be God's tzava, God's army here on earth. After all, the word army comes from the same root as the word arm. As God's tzava, our community can be a body organized around a sacred purpose, a body that welcomes all people with open, loving arms, a body armed and ready to fight important battles for justice and inclusion, a body focused on fulfilling God's vision for the world. There's much work still to be done. It's only the beginning. Shabbat Shalom. In honor of this day, of which we're celebrating a national coming out day of Shabbat, uh, I hope this has gone around a little bit. If Bob, you were able to hand them out. Some of us have, some of us don't have. I apologize if you don't have this responsive reading that is a prayer for National Coming Out Day in front of you, but that's okay. You can say amen at the end, which is just as good and affirms what we've all said. So we'll read this responsively. We are grateful for the gift of our lives and the gift of other people in our life. We are called to love one another and to do nothing to others that we would find hateful to ourselves. Our common life is enriched when queer, transgender, bisexual, lesbian, and gay people can come out, sharing the gifts of their sexual orientation and gender identity. We suffer when LGBTQ people are oppressed, excluded, or shamed by religious people who overlook the fundamental call to love one another. May we work to build a world where all people are celebrated and loved. Amen.